guys and welcome again to Chrisog Media Network. Uh, this is a channel where we bring you uh, items of updated news on sports, politics, entertainment, celebrities, and general happenings across the globe. To the returning subscriber, thank you and I welcome you. And to those of you who are yet to subscribe, and this is exactly what you want, uh, why don't you go ahead, smash the subscribe button, and open the notification bell icon on the side. The essence is that you'll be notified once we drop a new clip. Trust as much as possible also to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at the same time, at Chrisog Media Network. We trust as much as possible to uh, carry out a daily upload so that you don't miss out on any of these uploads at all. Uh, try as much as possible to subscribe and click uh, the notification bell icon on the side. Right, we're going to go very quickly into the two news of today. First of all, the one is a uh, man who has been arrested for conniving, conspiring with his wife to sell their two daughters for 700,000 naira. Right, when I heard or when I saw this news, I couldn't believe my ears that a mother who went through a lot to conceive went through a lot to carry those babies in a womb for nine months, you know, consecutively, making 18 months, who nurtured the babies to the ages of six and four. And all that she think about is to sell the babies for the sum, for the minia, for the penury, for the chicken change of 700,000 naira. Very, very bad indeed and very, very sad. The name of the man that was arrested is Elisha. F. Young, he is 40 years of age. Uh, they lived in Cameroon and um, they were arrested in Uyo, that's in Akwab Ibom State. They were apprehended and um, uh, thank goodness for uh, the man whom they confided in. So it was the man, uh, a security personnel who went to report them to NSCDC and it was then that the NSCDC kicked into action and they apprehended them and they asked them the question why are you trying to commit this why are you trying to uh commit this uh despicable act you know the flimsy excuse they gave they said the man actually responded to say the reason why he made such decision is due to extreme hardship all right due to extreme hardship because he is in death he needed to pay his death his debt and then other financial challenges so everything boils down to money okay but then the question in my heart the question on the people's lips is that why on earth will somebody in their right senses decide to sell their children that they have suffered they have labored to raise for the sum of just seven hundred thousand naira so it's just a question that has not been we've not been able to get answers to. Because in, ordin in the ordinary, very normal settings, you can't even sell your child for 200 million, 500 million, 1 billion, because they are worth more than that. Life is worth more than money, so we used to hear. But to these people, to this couple, to Mr. F. Young and his wife, life of their child, of their children, worth nothing. The only thing the life worth is 700,000 naira. And that is why they have decided to take that upon themselves to go sell their own children. So if they could sell their own children for the sum of 700,000, so that means they can sell other people's kids for even 10,000 naira. This is really bad. Everything boils down to money uh, because of financial hardship. I keep saying it, and I've said it before on this channel, that no matter how hard things are in this country, you can still put food on your table if you're hardworking. You can sell things, you can, you know, start little businesses that can actually make you to feed. At least once you are able to feed yourself, feed your family, the rest is little. Okay? The rest is little. So when you say because of hardship, how hard could things be? We see people selling oranges on the street uh, level uh, by the roadside. We see people hawking uh, 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 soft drinks, fizzy drinks, water. It's just because they need to make ends meet. They don't want to steal. They don't want to commit no evil. They don't want to kidnap. They don't want to, you know, do all sorts of terrible things. So they've decided to say, okay, this is the only available option for me. And that's why they decided to go on a street level to hawk. And as a matter of fact, they are cool with it until something changes, until their lives become better. They are more than happy to do it. 
But in the case of Mr. Elisha F. Young, who is 40 years of age, all that it, the life of his kids worth is 700,000 naira. So 350 for each child. Now, the name of those kids is Abbasi Friki Edet. She's six years of age. And Rachel Edet, four years of age. Very young blood who just started life, whom we don't know what they're going to become tomorrow, whether a professor, whether the governor of a state, whether the president of a nation, whether a minister, you know, they can even go to the international level to become something, somebody great in life. Now you want to, you want to sell them for the sum of 700,000 naira, the children that you bore, that you carried in your womb for nine months. That is very, very, very despicable. Uh, they were actually apprehended at Fall Care Hospital along Equine Street, where uh, he notified the security guard of his intention to sell his two children to pay off his debt and meet other financial challenges. So to those of you who know those areas, you, you will understand that that's exactly where the man was apprehended. Okay, so um, he reported, the, he confided uh, when he was arrested in the... Uh, he spoke uh, in, in the confidential uh, confident with the private security guard of that particular of his plan. So it was a security guard who went to report to the NSCDC of his intention to sell the case. Thanks to that guy uh, who was able to speak to the NSCDC, and the NSCDC was able to apprehend the man, his wife, and the two children. And at the moment, they are being taken to custody for further questioning. We will follow that, and we will definitely let you know the outcome of the um of the other but the most important thing is that the kids have been taken from them since their lives you know their lives you know for the six of seven hundred thousand era no matter how hard this country could be we can still eat it's just that we might not be able to drive exotic cars live in exotic houses buy exotic clothes and shoes but we can still put food on our mouth in our mouth if you were able to live in contention with the little we are able to um get and um, very quickly there's another one another man in a, a nigerian man who uh the united states of america has actually sentenced to over seven years imprisonment for actually defrauding um uh, uh women of over one million dollars all right so the federal high court, the federal uh, judge in Pennsylvania has sentenced a Nigerian man, Jabin Gospower Opako, to more than seven years in prison for conspiring to loan the approximately $1.89 million in mail and wire fraud proceeds in a scheme that targeted women. So this is the same thing we keep saying, all right? Now, this particular man in question can actually do other things to make his life better. But he has decided to go choose to, um, to uh, what's it called, to get himself involved in that kind of a thing. And as a matter of fact, the moment you begin to think of how to defraud people, those people over there, the Americans, the, you know, the British, they are thinking of how to catch you. So the moment you start, they know <laughs> there's no way you can actually uh, um, um, escape that kind of a thing, to be honest with you. You know, in a situation like that, she he gave flimsy excuses to to, to 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 the women, especially to this very one that she actually do before she was caught, before he was caught. That after cultivating online relationship with the victim, the conspirator uh, fraudulently induced the victims to send and transmit funds for various frictions reasons and purposes, include to assist a work in Alaska who fell from a tower to assist a worker in Alaska who fell from a tour, to purchase an apartment in Washington, D.C. I'm telling you exactly what they say to those women or to that woman, you know, of the reasons why they needed those money, right? Okay, right. So, in what apartment in Washington, D.C., to assist the United Nations to repair machineries and equipment on, on an oil drilling rig, to pay for medicines, to recover a $6 million dollar inheritance and to make an investment in gold so those are the uh reasons why those are the reasons he gave you know to the woman in request of the money so this is just like getting yourself involved with some other uh, uh people and, and at the end of the day you discover that you are being caught the sum of one 1.89 million dollars is in total of the amount that he has actually conspired to defraud uh, 
women with. It's, it's just boiled down to the same thing that people really need to think of the fact that the moment you start to the moment you start to think about how to defraud people is the moment those people are thinking of how to catch you. So it's something that you do it now, you get caught. So why don't you just put an end to it and face a life? Get something doing, something legitimate, something that could take you completely away from crime rather than get yourself involved in all sort of rubbish. You know, it is always very important. It's just that quite unfortunate that people don't learn from other people's lessons. A lot of people have been caught, have been dealt with, but you still find out that people still get into it. You know, it's so sad. You know, it's quite unfortunate. By the time you now spend seven years in prison, by the time you come out, you'll not be yourself anymore. A lot of things will have changed around you. You know, so it's quite sad. We still advise our guys out there, we'll advise them to kind of, get themselves into something that is legitimate otherwise otherwise the result will be very very terrible so guys that's all i've got for you today and i'll be coming back again to see you uh, with something that is really touching and until next time when i'll be coming your way this is chris Sog, and i'll see you at the next one bye now